All right, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. I am your host, Tanisha. Tanisha's Reading Podcast is dedicated to anyone who desires to make reading a daily habit as a form of self-care. To stay updated when a new podcast is uploaded, please subscribe to the channel. In addition, you can find me on Instagram at Tanisha's Reading Corner for many book recommendations and tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. Let's dive into today's episode. Book lovers of the podcast, I thank you so much for coming back to another episode. And before we begin, it's just a brief announcement that we have a new webpage. Yes, 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 a new webpage at www.tanishasreadingcorner.com. All one word, Tanisha's Reading Corner. There you will go to get information when a new episode has been uploaded. Uh, tips and tri- uh, blog posts that describe tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. So head on over to www.tanishasreadingcorner.com. Subscribe. Also leave a review and share with family and friends to help make the podcast grow and get more people reading daily. So today's episode, you've seen the title so you already know, it is The Clash of the Titans, The Age Old Tale. Which is better, movies or books? As a reading podcast, obviously I am totally biased on this, but we will look at both sides of the argument. We will discuss, and at the end, as always, I will give my opinion. And so, before without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so to begin, why are books better than movies? Now, there's a couple of very valid reasons why books are better than movies. And, well, let me just give you the top important ones. Books give the reader a more complex experience. Well, let's think about it. How long does it take to read a book and how long does it take to watch a movie? Clearly, books will keep you entertained for a longer, more about a of time. While most movies will be over in less than two hours or less, you could enjoy a book for several days depending on how much time you spend reading or how fast of a reader you are. This gives you more time to absorb the story, to fall in love with the characters, creating a story more real, getting you more involved and allowing you to appreciate it better. Not to mention that the author's writing style, the description, the metaphors considerably spice up the experience. Also, books encourage readers to let their imaginations fill in the gaps. They allow the reader to imagine what the characters look like, how they sound, where their action takes place. Visualizing is a big part of the reading experience, and it plays a huge role in our mental development. Being able to create your own image of each character, imagining what they sound like, makes reading a much more personal experience than watching a movie. Also, the setting as well. Being able to read the descriptions and being able to immerse yourself just in your imagination about what that place might look like. How would you involve yourself in it? Our own interpretation becomes our mental property. And it's unique for each and every one of us. Movies just aren't the same. You know, movies, they do the job for you. They put this thing together. This is how the director interprets it. And so it oftentimes takes away from your own personal experience. Case in point. One book that became a movie, very famously, the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise. Now, I fell in love with the Fifty Shades franchise from the book series because the books were so descriptive and it really just made the characters come alive to me. Once they translated that into a movie, I kind of lost interest. I went to see the first one in the theaters. Um, The second and third, I just waited for those to come out on TV. I just wasn't as interested anymore because... For me, especially the Christian Grey character, I had in my mind about who he would look like, what he would sound like. But when you guys see the actual character, I mean, he did a good job, don't get me wrong, but it's just not the same. It took the, like I said, the imagination, it took all that away, and I just, yeah. So, moving on. Books will always contain more detail than a movie. Snap, snap, snap. While the record for the longest movie ever made the movie is called Logistics, if you want to look it up, stands at a whopping 35 days. I don't know who would dare sit through such a movie, but okay, to each his own. We all know the standard film duration ranges around 80 to 20 minutes, so about an hour and a half to roughly two hours. Unless you're looking at a Lord of the Rings franchise or the or the Avengers franchise or any mega, mega big blockbuster film, on average, 80 to 20 minutes, 120 minutes. Regardless of how accurately the writers, director, producers would like to transpose the book into a movie, 
squeezing hundreds of pages into 90 to 120 minute is it, it's impossible especially all the little details that you as a reader pick up you look at the movie it's like that's not in there but it's like give you gotta give them a break I mean, there's only so much you can jam pack into so much time that is why reading a book instead of watching a movie will give the reader a much more complete idea about the action, the characters, and importantly, the story and the themes. One important thing that books do have and movies don't is that they provide more background information than a movie does. As I look through my notes here, and that much is very, very true. I'm just thinking about my own personal experience with movies and books one of the, my favorite books as a child, the series, was the Harry Potter series. Every Thanksgiving or Halloween, me and my family, after we read the books first, my mom was adamant. Like, if you want to go see the movie, you got to read the book first. So we would do that, then we go see the movie. And I'm glad she did that for us because when we went to see the movie, there were so many things left out. Like the actor, you no know, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, his eyes were blue and in the book his eyes are green and while I understand that there are reasonings why they couldn't do it via the movie in the book that's actually a really big point because his eyes are green because they resemble that of his mother Lily James and that's why his eyes have to be that pickled green so that that part really yeah because his eyes do come up a lot in the book series and so to not see that on screen it not it didn't take it away from the storyline completely, but it's those small details that make up so much. And another reason why books over movies. Books are more affordable than movies. Movies rush things so that they can end it fast and there. Not everyone has access to movies or can afford going to movie theaters, but books can be borrowed at the library or from a friend. Books are portable and can be read online as well, anytime. When reading books, we get more knowledge and it helps us improve our vocabulary. Characters are described much better and with more detail. Yep. And why books and... Oh, yes. So, why should books not be movies? Now, as a book lover, it sometimes irritates me a lot when every new major book becomes a movie because it's like, ugh, you know they're going to leave some certain thing down, they're not going to do this and that. So why do we do this? Why do we keep seeing movie makers turn books into movies? Most book lovers believe that no book should ever become a book movie. Eh, I don't agree. Some books, like the Harry Potter series, I loved it when it became a movie, but I have to agree, not every book needs to be a movie. And the reason for that is that, rather simple, most movies can never meet the standards and expectations the books are setting. Preach! There's always important details that are being left out in the movie. Certain lines, or most of them, are changed and the venues sometimes look nothing like what was described in the book. Not only that, but what's even worse is that even movie adaptations come at a huge cost for the movie producers. And in order to make a profit, they usually need to make the movie commercial. This always hurts the final product and forces producers to put the book in a different perspective in order to get as many people to pay for the movie ticket as possible. That much is true. I remember a book by one of my favorite authors, Clive Cussler. He wrote a book called The Sahara. It is about his main character, Dirk Pitt, and all the adventures he goes on as an undercover agent. And they turned that book into a movie. And I read the book. The book was fantastic. It was amazing. Action packed. Everything that I love. And then they made it into a movie with Matthew McConaughey. And I saw the movie. And as a book lover, I gotta say, I hated it. <laughs> it was nothing like the book at all. They left so much out. They changed so much to it that it wasn't even the book anymore. And for me, as a book lover, I mean, it was a good movie on its own. But if you're trying to be close to what the book was, it just, it failed on all accounts. And it just... It, just, it didn't work. I mean, so many of the roles, so many of the character plot, all the, of the things and everything, it just, it wasn't good. So yeah, on that regard, I absolutely get it. Like, why do we need to make every book a movie? Ugh. But if you're going to do it, I mean, I'm not against it. I'm not all the way against it. I, I twerk on the fence a lot. But if you're going to do it, at least try and stay true to the spirit of the book. Like, I'll... Like, Going back to the Harry Potter reference, I was okay with the fact that his eyes weren't green, but because the movie stayed true to the spirit of the series, I was willing to overlook that. But in book in movies like this, like the Sahara one, 
it didn't stay true to the spirit of the book, which is probably why it flopped at the theaters. So yeah. So movie makers out there, if you're listening, if you're going to turn a book into a movie, stay true to the spirit in which the book was written. So, on that note, we're going to take a quick little break, do a quick little product promotion, and then we'll jump back in as to, and look at the other side of this argument as to why movies are better than books. So stay tuned. Ladies of the podcast, did you know that your period is not supposed to hurt? Periods are normal, but the pain should not be. Inflammation occurs naturally on your cycle, but painful periods indicate that the inflammation is higher than it should be. That's where some main supplements come in. Some main PMS supplements comes packed with nine superpowered plant extracts and minerals. Semaine will not only help to lower your pain levels, but to also support your body naturally from cycle to cycle. For more information, go to their website at semaine, S-E-M-A-I-N-E, health.com. Also, follow them on Instagram at Semaine Health. Also, listeners of the podcast, when you find a supplement that you like to use, your Como code, Tanisha's Reading Corner, to get 20% off your first bottle. Again, the promo code, Tanisha's Reading Corner, to get 20% off your first bottle. Now, let's get back into the episode. Are movies better than books? This seems kind of like a pointless question at this point because we just went through all the great benefits of being books over movies. And there is a general consensus that books are always better than the movie films, like with anything else. However, with all things in life, there are exceptions to every rule. There are instances where certain movies are better than books, as you will see further. And watching a movie is never better than watching reading. Now, watching a movie is never better than reading a book, though. But movies do have their own advantages, and some adaptations are actually done with great respect and love for the books that they started with. Like I said, as long as the movie stays true to the spirit in what the book was talking about, the reader can sometimes forego smaller details. So, why, though, are movies better than books? Let's agree that some movies are just pieces of art. Not all movies are made for commercial productions, means to bring in so much cash as possible. Creating a movie is as much of an artistic act as it is to write a book. And there are instances where the movie creators were better artists than the writers of the book that the movies was based on. Movies do come with certain advantages for the ones who are enjoying them and then there's reason why they are so popular nowadays. While it's definitely not something that happens very often, here's why movies are better than books. Well, it takes less time to watch a movie than to read a book. We live very, very busy lives nowadays with social media and news news and works and all that jazz. Movies typically last around, like I said before, 90 to 120 minutes. That's quicker than exploring a story than just having to read a book. While it's clearly not the best way to do it, whenever you need to quickly find out what a book is about, watching a movie is a bit more useful and more fun than reading the book summary online. Movies tend to fast about two hours and books take longer and last take time. Especially depending on the matter what kind of how fast of a reader you are, it could take you days, even weeks to finish a book. Whereas in a movie or in or a series of books, whereas in a movie, you know, two and a half hours for a film, you're done. Now case in point, the Black Panther movie. The first one back that came out in two thousand eighteen. That Black Panther movie was based upon a series of comic books. So, I mean, even though, even if you hadn't read the comic books, the way that the movie presented itself, you knew everything that needed to know about the Black Panther. So in that respect, they totally take you to the spirit of it. So smaller details like Queen Ramonda in the movie is actually Princess 
King T'Challa's mother, but in the comic books, that's his stepmother, and that's a whole nother other story. So you're willing to forego little details like that? Uh, and also details like, you know, the Uncle Scion. In our previous episode about Black Panther, Long Live Wakanda, please have a listen to that as well. Good one. His Uncle Scion is very much in throughout the comic books, but you don't really see him in the first Black Panther movie. But I mean, the Black Panther movie was just so good. That, again, small details like that, not so much of a big deal. So, again, staying true to the spirit. So, in that regard, that's a sign that the movie kind of was better than the comic book. <gasps> I know I said that out loud. I didn't mean to say it, but I did. So, there we go. So, I know as a book reader, I'm not supposed to say that. But, in that respect, it did stay true to the spirit of the comic book series. So, I'm okay with that. So, the next step. Next step, next reasoning why the movie can sometimes be better than the book. Movies are more visually stimulating. For those of us who lack imagination, movies can turn out to be more pleasant experience than reading a book. Imagination levels vary from person to person. And while some of us can create vivid images in our thoughts while reading, others are having a hard time visualizing anything other than just blankness. Uh, for those who have lower imagination levels, movies do the work for them. There's no need to imagine what a character might look like when he's portrayed by an actor on a screen in front of you. Case in point. The Harry Potter series. I cannot go back to that because it's just... Uh, I love Harry Potter so much. I can reread Harry Potter books. I can watch the movies all day long, and especially around this time, the fall. And the first one, The Sorcerer's Stone, in the scene where um, the kids are walking in to the great hall for the first time that scene just took my breath away because the camera pans up and you see the candles hanging and all of that and it's everything that I imagined that it would look like in the book it came to life before my eyes as a kid and I just I fell in love and I fell in love with the series and that's why I just it made me read the books even more and I loved the movies more too so that's one instance where they did justice by the book. They really did follow it to the nail. And it was just a, it was perfect. So yeah. And also for someone who really just does not like reading but still wants to go see the movie, I would say that's one series that you can absolutely go see because it does hold true to the descriptions in the book. And another reason why sometimes the movie can be better than the book. The actors bring characters to life. That is true. Oftentimes, you know, certain characters that were kind of dull in the reading of the book, a certain actor could take that character and make them so beloved. And it's like, let me go back and reread that again. Uh, we have to admit that actors that play in film and movie adaptations can make or break a film. Truth. While some deliver subpar performances, which decreases the value of the end result, others can turn things around and transfer the project into masterpieces. Case in point, The Godfather. The book by Mario Puzo, a wonderful read, a fantastic read. But for me, in that instance, I actually saw the movie first, then went back and read the book. Now, reading the book, the main character, Don Corleone, he's a very strong character. Don't get me wrong. I love the way that Mario Puzo writes him. But Marlon Brando in The First Godfather, I mean, so many adaptations, so many different um parodies have been done just based off of that one character alone he did really brought a whole Marlon Brando is just a phenomenal actor and he just brought a whole nother level to the movie and the movie I think just celebrated its 50th anniversary always one of my favorite always one of my go-to favorite movies to watch so that yes an amazing actor can take you know a very good character and make them an icon really the Don Corleone character is truly iconic I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. That was my best intimidation to interpretation, so don't judge me. So, my opinion in all this, of course, as a reading podcast, yes, the books are always be better than the movie. The books will always be better than the movie, point blank, and the period. Hands down, no doubt. However, within the past year, I have come to appreciate movie adaptations of books more because I have realized that comparing books to their counterpart movies isn't fair. At the end of the day, the two mediums of storytelling have different advantages and different qualifications for what makes them good. 
Like Stephen King once said, comparing one to the other is like comparing apples to oranges. They are both great sources of entertainment, but they are they just aren't very comparable. Yeah, I mean, uh, oftentimes, you know, just for crunching of time, sometimes what directors will do, they will leave out points that they think aren't very good. But for the reader, it's like, that was kind of important for the book. And oftentimes for me as a as a reader, and a, a movie girl, because I love both, I love going to movies, I love watching books and TV series. Like, for example, um, the Game of Thrones series. I actually watched the series first, then tried to go back and read the books. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't read the books. It's so sad. Because I'd already had it in my mind what this was supposed to be. And the books and the movies were, the book and the TV series were totally different. And that made me sad. Uh, so yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you like the series more than you like the books. Sometimes you like the books more than the series or the movie. Yeah, but at this channel, as I've done in the past... Yeah, you don't have to take. Uh, yeah, you don't have to make take my word for this. You know, at this channel, we love research articles, and so I have with me today. Let me go through my notes. Super summary uh, website did a poll on this, and the results were very close. We're putting no, not very close. They were different than that. Um, overall, thirty four percent of people enjoyed the book compared to twenty seven people who preferred the movie out of a hundred people that they surveyed. Although 82% of those surveyed agreed that screen adaptations help books come to life, 46% of people argued that film adaptations would never be as good as the book. Almost 25% declared that the movie even ruined the original book. Like I said, Game of Thrones. Couldn't even read the book. And this website also surveyed and said that the top three books that people preferred over the films were The Da Vinci Code, the Chronicles of Narnia, and the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. Like I said, I actually did prefer the book over the movie for that one. And the top reasons for not approving the film adaptations weren't surprising. Nearly 32% said that the movie was too different than the book. 34.4% of the people said that the film lacked key details. And a little more than 10% of those surveyed didn't recognize the appropriate two-hour movie time limit. Yeah. I mean, again, you can only squeeze in so much detail into two hours and a lot of good scenes from the book that should have been in the movie get cut out because they're trying to cut it down. Although respondents were divided on whether they prefer reading versus watching, they were more aligned with the most watched adaptation. Forrest Gump took home the top spot with 76.9% of people saying they've seen it. However, 5.6% of people said they enjoyed the book. Following the Jurassic Park series with 74.8%, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with 73.7%, and the Harry Potter series with 70.1%. Perhaps a slight like preference of the book, the book over the movies, um, is because, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, for me, the movies over the book, it's because libraries and bookstores aren't as popular as going to the movie theaters. You know, um, while books aren't as expensive as going to the movie theaters, uh, a condensed version of a book takes only two and a half hours, whereas a book can take you weeks up to months to read. So there's advantages to both sides, but there's also disadvantages. But as a avid reader, I must say the book has been and will always be better than the movie. So... Like I do with all my podcasts, I like to end each one with a quote from one of my favorite authors. And today's quote of the day comes from Stephen King. So you heard me reference this quote before, but here's it incomplete. Books and movies are like apples and oranges. They are both fruit, but taste completely different. And on that note, I thank you so much for listening to another episode of Tenacious Reading Corner Podcast. Follow us at www.tenaciousreadingcorner.com. Again, that was www.tenaciousreadingcorner.com. All one word. Also, follow me on Instagram at Tenacious Reading Corner for more updates on when we upload a new episode, uh, more tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit, and more book recommendations to add to your TBR or to be read list. Again, thank you so much for listening. I wish you all good wellness and good reading.